Hello and welcome to another Quick Bits episode where I'm going to look at reading and writing binary files in C. Now if you've seen my other video or just played around with C a bit before, it's likely that you've come across writing and reading say numbers or information from a text file and this is a really useful skill. However sometimes we might prefer to use a binary format which works very similar to how we could write to a text file but with some core key differences. But first I just want to establish what actually it means to have a binary file versus a text file. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and created two files here. So in one of them I have a text file, okay? So this is just something you can open in any text program and you can see that it's just got some numbers in it. And then our other file here is a binary file. And if you see here, we actually can't understand what this means because this is our text editor attempting to read a file that isn't a text file and it's mangling the characters. In fact, it's actually possible that we can open this up using um, a binary editor. Okay, so this here is something that I can use to display binary information. So I'm just gonna make this a bit larger, okay? So in this text file, okay, this is plain text and we can just read it using any text operator, okay? But this view here is actually a special um, editor that I have so that I can actually look at raw binary information. And you can see that this file includes one, two, three, four, five, six bytes of information. And these six bytes actually um, correspond to these numbers. In fact, both of these files contain the same data, except one is binary encoding, so it's not human readable, and the other one is text encoded, so it is human readable. It's important to note that the name of the file, and particularly the extension of the file, in this case both of these files are .dat files, that has no bearing on whether or not the file is a binary file. In fact, every single file is actually technically a binary file, but some of them can be interpreted as different things, whilst others cannot. The only difference between this text file and this binary file is that this text file was written and constructed in a way such that a text editor can actually understand everything that it contains, whereas this one was not. So it's really important to remember that when we're creating a text file, we're essentially just writing character bytes to a file in a long string, okay? But we can create a text file using .dat, using .text, using .whatever. This .c file, for example, is just a raw text file. So you can't just create a binary file by changing to a .dat format. Instead, we actually need to write raw binary data to the file rather than text data. So how do we do that? Okay, well, this is a simple example that was done in my last file IO episode um, where we talked about reading numbers from a file. And anyone who's done sort of file operations in C will be familiar that we have to basically open the text file um, or open a file, and then we simply have to um, make sure that the file was able to be opened so that we didn't have any errors. And then we need to perform any kind of operations like writing numbers to the file or anything like that. Okay, in this case, we are using fscanf to read stuff from a file. And that's all well and good. So how could we instead write a program that would write data to a binary file? Well, we can start by just scrapping this bit, okay? We don't need this bit. But fundamentally, our opening the file and checking if the file exists works the same way. But there's one tweak we need to change. By default, fopen will open whatever file we specify here and try and open it as a text file and try and understand it as a text file, okay? If we want to specifically open a file in order to read or write binary, we have to tell it that it's a binary format. Okay, in this case, I'm going to delete both of our example files here. Okay, and we're going to create a new file when we run this code. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, um, let's create a file that we want to, let's create a name of the file that we want to try and open. Let's try to call it, uh, let's call our file binary dot dat for binary data. Remember, this does not control whether or not our file is a binary or not. That's just an extension that's a useful hint to us what kind, what kind of information it might set. To actually specify that we want to open a file in a binary format rather than as just a text encoded format, we need to say that we want to uh, say write, so w for write, b, binary, okay? So if you just wanted to write a text file, you would just open a file using the file mode w. Okay. However, if we want to write to a text, if we want to write to a file in binary format, then we need to write binary or WB. Okay. Then we can check if it's open, and if it and if we can open it, then we won't have any errors, and we'll save that. Okay. All right, one one more thing we need to quickly do before running our program is actually include uh, the standard lib. 
okay? Uh, because we're using this exit function here to basically close the program if we can't open the file properly. Um, but that is actually, oops, that is actually defined in the standard lib.h. So we need to make sure we include that. So now if we open our ter terminal and we just try and compile this file, the source file is called binary.c and I will just put it in a file called bin for short. We run it, no errors. It was able to successfully open this file on disk. Um, but notice that this file doesn't actually appear to exist. Basically what's happened here is it's opened a file by creating a new one and then it hasn't written any information to it. So it won't show up in, in, our, in our file format. As soon as we start writing data and closing the file, we'll, we'll see some information here. Okay, so the next question is, okay, now that we have a file that opens, how do we write some data to it? All right, so in order to do that, first of all, we need to create some data to write to the file. So let's start off playing with just a simple integer um, called number, and we will just set that equal to say 32, okay? So this is the data that we want to try and write to our file. Now, if we were using um, a text format, we would use f printf, and then we would specify like the file name, and then we would give it like a format string, but we don't want to use this, okay? Because this is printing strings to text files, and we don't have that. We're working with raw binary, so we just have to write the raw data. So how do we do this? Well, we use something called f write, okay? And it works in a similar sort of way. So basically, all we have to do is say, okay, what do we want to write? Okay, in this case, we want to write the number to the file, perfect. Then we have to say, how many bytes of information do we want to write to the disk? Okay, because remember, everything in C, everything in memory is stored as a binary number, just hiding, clogging up in the distance. If I open this binary file, for example, in the hex editor, right? So this is the program we just compiled before. And as you can see, it's just a bunch of binary information, all encoded with ones and zeros, okay? And that's essentially what we're creating, okay? So some of these might be numbers, some of it might be strings. It's all sorts of different data all mixed in. So we can say, okay, hey, I want to write information, I want to write the number to the file, but we also need to say how many bytes of space to write, like how much, how many bytes is this number? And well, it's a bit hard to know. Okay, so the common data types actually all have fairly well-defined sizes. For example, this number is likely to be a 32-bit integer, meaning that it's four bytes of data. But for the most of the time, it's too much of a pain to look up and try and remember how big of an object we're trying to write. So we use this size of command, okay? And what that will do is it will return how many bytes a particular data type takes to store, okay? So in this case, we can do size of int, all right? And basically what this is saying is take the information stored in number and write that many bytes of information, like however big an integer is, write that many bytes of information, and then we need to give it the file to write to. In this case, our file is called text file. We should probably rename that to binary file. So we'll call it bin file for short, and we'll also rename here. Okay, and here, so now we just need to say bin file. Now there is an error with the current program state, but we're going to compile it and see if it tells us what it is. So compiling our program again, and here we go. Okay, so we've got a big error, and this is a common error you'll get when you're trying to write data. So let's see, what, what, what's some of the problems we're having? Okay, so first of all, let's start at our top. Okay, so our first error is in our binary.c file, line 15, character 12. So line 15, character 12. So it's somewhere around here. It says passing argument of f write makes pointer from integer without a cast. Hmm, that's kind of hard to understand. And then we've got so many more errors, too few arguments. Okay, so we've missed some stuff. Let me explain. One of the errors here was just because I genuinely forgot and another one of the errors here is something that I was intentionally doing. Okay, so the first thing I want to address is that when we are writing data to a file, it doesn't work. We can't just say, oh, I want to print the variable stored in number. We actually need to give it an address, okay? so. If you've seen my video on arrays in C, you'll be a little bit familiar with the concept of a memory address. I haven't done an episode on pointers and memory addresses in general yet. But basically the idea is, when we write this line, the C, the, the C runtime basically, it doesn't have a runtime, but the computer basically sees this line of code and says, okay, I need to allocate some space somewhere in memory to store a number, okay? And in that space, I'm going to put the number 32. All right, so, when we write, what we're actually trying to do is say, hey, instead of just trying to dump some raw information here, look up where this number is stored. Okay, so this is what our and does. 
our AND essentially gets the address of where this number is stored in memory. Okay, so look up where this number is stored in memory, and then from that, read as many bytes as it takes to store that number, okay, and put it into bin file. Now, the other mistake I've made here is the block size, which is essentially how many times we want to um, repeat this. Pretty much always, you're just gonna be using a block size of one. I don't really wanna go into the specifics of what this value is. Um, just remember that this is essentially your syntax. It's basically how many times do I want to repeat this, um, which you can use for like storing arrays and stuff. But for now, let's just leave that at one. Okay, so now how are we gonna do this? Okay, so it's get the memory address where our number variable is stored, okay? Get the size of how many bytes it takes to store an integer and read that many, many bytes from this memory address and put that into our binary file. Okay, so now, if we come down and I'm just going to clear my terminal and recompile, we get no errors. Okay, and simply now what we can do is just run our bin file and you'll see that a file has been created, this binary.dat file. And we can open it in our, um, you won't have a hex editor, but I've got an editor where I can open a binary file and just sort of try and look at it. And here's the raw data that we've written to the file. Now remember that I said an integer is four bytes. Well, look, we've got one, two, three, four bytes of information have been written to the disk. So that's pretty much as simple as it gets, okay? And we can just write anything we want like this, okay? So we can create a double, um, and we'll call it, um, say, my double, for example, and this is gonna be 3.1415, classic pi, okay? And we can literally just copy our F write line, okay? Come down here and instead say, get the address of my double, and we also need the size of the double data type to know how many bytes we're trying to write to file. Now a double is I believe by default um, eight bytes of information, uh, but we can find out, okay? So by doing, by getting the memory address of the double and then how many bytes to read from memory and writing it to the same file, then we can recompile our code and we can run it again, okay? And now if we open the binary data file in our hex editor, you'll see we've got heaps more information here. So we have the original four bytes of data that were our integer, okay, that's these. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight additional bytes, which represent our double, okay? And we can just keep on doing this. We could write a different double after that, and it will just keep appending them in a long list of random binary data. Let's make this one say uh, 72.6 or 723.6, for example, okay? And you get the idea, basically, it works the same way. We use file write, we give it the address of the information we're trying to store, how many bytes to read from that address, and then uh, the file to write to, always keeping this one here. It's just needed, it's annoying, but you have to do it. So that answers one question, but how do we read from the file? Well, it works in much the same way. If we sort of look at this binary file, it tracks it. If we can just write bytes, say four bytes, then as long as we know that an integer is stored at the start, then we should just be able to read back four bytes of information and interpret that as an integer. Likewise, we then wrote a double, which is eight bytes. So if we just remember that the double was the second thing we wrote, then we can just read the next eight bytes and use them as a double. So let's do that now. So we never ran this bit of code, so let's just delete that, okay? And then I'm going to comment this out. This is so we can remember which order we wrote things in, um, but it's not actually gonna run. So I can just use a shortcut, control or command, and then the forward slash works in a lot of editors. It'll just comment out this whole block. Okay, so now if we want to read a file, we need to change our file access mode. Okay, so instead of being a write binary, we want to read binary. It can be useful to come up here and take use of these hash defines. So we can do like a, a hash define uh, binary uh, underscore write. And we could say that a binary write is a WB. And we could do a similar thing to say that a binary read is a RB. And that way we can just change this here to be, uh, say, binary read or binary write. So in this case, we do want to read, okay? Um, but you can just use these strings instead if you don't want to muck around with hash to finds. Right. So let's just try and read our integer back. Now remember, we wrote 32 into the file. So let's see if we can get that back by reading. So first of all, Let's create somewhere where we can store the number when we read it back. So we're gonna create another integer called number, but this time we don't know what it's equal to yet. So we're just going to initialize it. And again, this will allocate some space in memory to store that number, but it doesn't initialize it to anything. Then we're going to call fread, as in file read, okay? 
And the similar thing again, we want to read information into the number, okay? So whatever information we read, we're going to read it into the uh, memory address that is our number, where our number is allocated, okay? So we're going to read into that place in memory. And again, we need to say how many bytes do we want to read from the file? And remember that it was four bytes, okay? So we want to read four bytes, but instead of just hard coding four here, again, we'll just use size of int because this is honestly just um, better because it means if we change this data type, this code will still work. So say we change this to a double, it will still know to read that many bytes of information and it should all be good. And this doesn't take any, this doesn't cost any performance overhead because this can actually get um, calculated at compile time. So it doesn't, doesn't slow your program down at all. Okay, the next is we want to say the block size or how many of these do we want to read? Now we're not using arrays or anything. So we're just going to say one. We just want to read one of those elements. Okay. And then the next thing is what file do we want to read from? And that's just what we had before. It's just our bin file, bin file. And actually what you'll notice is that the f write and f read work exactly the same way. Okay. It's just that one is writing from a memory address. It's writing this many bytes to this file. The other one is reading from this memory address, this many bytes to this file. Okay, so they're, they're, they're really easy. It's hard to get them mixed up because they're exactly the same. All that changes is that one's reading and one's writing and you can only do it if the file mode is in the correct mode. Okay, so if we put a semicolon here, okay, in theory, now we'll, ha we'll have been able to read the first um, four bytes from the file. So the next thing to do is we're just going to use a printf statement just to print it to the console, just to check that we're right. So percentage D backslash N and then um, we're gonna print the number to the screen, okay. So recompiling and remember the we wrote 32, so we should expect to see 32 here. So if we run our program, indeed, we have read 32 back. And again, we can do a similar thing as before. If we actually just, um, we know that we wrote an int and then we wrote a double. So as long as we read the int first, then read the double, this will work well. So again, we're going to create my double and initialize it to nothing. And then we're going to read into my double um, the next eight bytes after we've already read these ones. And we'll also print those to the screen just to see that we get the same value extracted back out. So a double is a long float. So we have to use the LF format specifier. And here we're going to say my double. Okay, so saving this, recompiling it, and running it. We have a bit of an issue here. You see, we were able to successfully retrieve the 32, but when we tried to read the uh, the double, it didn't quite work. So why is that? Well, the answer is actually something quite silly. And um, it's that this line here is uh, F write, so which is a bit of a mistake on my part. But if you just make this F read, in theory, we run our code again, and um, let me just clear the terminal just for clarity. And then um, doing this, now we retrieve our double value correctly. So just, yeah, because these are exactly the same, it's very easy to mix up your read and writes. Make sure you're in the right mode. So yes, perfect. So that's the basics, okay? So it's just like, you can just write a number um, and read a number and all that you need to change is your file mode, okay? And the syntax is the same. Basically, we're talking about writing um, a value from a memory address, say the number stored in 32, um, writing the amount of bytes that that number takes up in memory to a file or likewise reading it. Now to keep track of how things are stored, all you have to do is make sure that you're reading values in the same order that they were written, okay? If we swapped these around, you'll note that we'll get incorrect behavior, okay? So if we try and read the double first, it will work, um, like it, it will work perfectly fine, but you're gonna see we're gonna get some different values. So if I compile this, and now we're trying to read the double first and then the integer, you'll see that we get some weird behavior. We've got this like, extremely huge number and then we've got this like negative number and the reason is because this is just raw binary data we can read these bytes and interpret them however we want if we read the double first it will take it'll take bytes zero here through seven so all of these ones and try and pass them as a double which will work it, you can make that be a double it can be whatever um, and in this case it turns out this is the binary representation for the number negative 610.304 and then it'll take the next four bytes to read as an, in, as an integer. So it just, it just, it doesn't know. It doesn't care what order. You're just telling it, hey, I would like to read into this variable this many bytes from this file. So it's important that you get your data types and your order the right way around. Because the integer was on the file first, we have to read it before we can read the double. 
In the next episode, I'm going to go into how we can read and write arrays or better ways we can structure data written to a binary file so that we're more able to, we're more easily able to keep track of all the information that we've written. But for now, it's basically so simple. You can write raw binary and you can read raw binary and you can just as long as you read it in the same order you write it, everything should just work. So yeah, cheers for watching. And the next one, I'm going to go into more techniques you can use to write arrays, to manage different memory types, all that kind of thing.